more and more in digital forensics, we see the importance of analyzing volatile data of a system to identify system compromise and malware. In this video, we will be looking at acquiring the memory of a Linux system. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so we can stare at the purple sun. In the digital forensics world, we see malware that's more and more sophisticated in the way they operate and keep themselves from being discovered. Obtaining a memory dump will capture a frozen state of that system for that moment in time. The resulting memory dump can be invaluable in terms of containing information about the network connections, running processes, and data that's not stored on any drive but just in memory, credentials, passwords, encryption keys, etc. A lot of this information is actually not accessible by any other methods besides memory capture. The first tool we're going to look at is called AVML, which stands for Acquire Volatile Memory for Linux. This is a portable memory acquisition tool developed by Microsoft for Linux. Yeah, you heard that right, Microsoft. But we really shouldn't be that surprised since they've been putting a lot of resources into the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. And the big advantage of AVML over other tools is that it's a static binary that can be deployed to multiple Linux distros without having to know the kernel version or needing to compile code. The tested distros include Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, RHEL, Oracle Linux, etc. And you can just run the binary and extract memory. It's just that easy. The first thing we're going to do is to download the executable of AVML. So using our browser, if you just type in the URL of HTTPS, colon slash slash github.com slash Microsoft slash AVML or just click on the link I provided in the description below and click in on the icon that says latest. We transfer to the latest release page. Here I'm going to click on the first file here called AVML. When the pop-up panel comes up, I click on save file. And then in the terminal window, I'm going to go ahead and change directory to where the file was downloaded. So I'm going to cd into downloads and take a look at what we have here using the ls-l command. And we see that there is a file that's about 3 megs in size. Next, I'm going to run the file command against the avml file to see what we have. So file of avml, we see that it is a 64-bit executable. So if your target is a 32-bit machine, this is not going to work. At this point, we are ready to run the tool. So let's just run the program by typing dot slash AVML. We are greeted with a permission denied error because we're unable to execute that file due to permission problems. To fix that, we can use the change mode command to make the file executable. So I'm going to do chmod A plus X AVML. And now let's just type dot slash AVML again. And this time we get an error that says we need to provide the required output file name. So okay, let's give it a output file name. I'm going to call mine cane.mem. And this time we get a different error telling us that we're unable to parse slash proc slash iomem. And this is because this operation is very low level or high level, depending on how you look at it. But in any case, the fix is that you need to be root to run the AVML command. So let's go ahead and append the sudo command before we run the command. So now we're going to do sudo dot slash AVML cane dot mem. And this time we get the error of unable to read memory. It also says unable to create memory snapshots from source of slash dev crash slash proc core and slash dev mem. And this time the reason is because the location where we're running AVML doesn't have enough space to store the memory dump. So if we do df dash h of dot, we can see that we don't have enough space to store the four gig memory dump that I'm going to extract. And so when you're actually extracting the memory, you probably want to write it out to a location other than your target machine anyway. So I'm going to plug in an external drive to store the memory dump. 
I'm gonna go ahead and sudo mount slash dev slash sdv1 to slash mnt slash hd and then i'm going to cd into slash mnt hd and run it again this time i'm going to do sudo tld slash download slash avml and then point the output to cane.mem in the external drive and finally we get the command running hey hey look at that but this is actually a good exercise to see all of the different errors you might see and how you might debug and get your AVML running. Now that it's done, let's see what we have. We do a ls-lh of cane.memory, and we do see that AVML created a four gig file because the memory in my system here, my target system is four gigs. And we can verify that by using the free command. So free-h for human readable, we do see here that it is about four gigs in size. So now let's do a quick demo to show that the memory capture actually worked. And to do that in another window, I had started to type a document in VI, but then I never saved it to the file system. So it's just completely in memory. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the strings command to pull out all the text in this memory dump and then pipe that through the grep command for a unique word that I know it's in a document. So I'm going to do strings of cane.mem and then pipe that through grep-i of the special word Vanderlei. And so here we see the strings and grep commands themselves are memory indicating that the executing commands are there. And then we also see parts of the document that we were editing but never saved indicating that unsaved documents are also stored in memory. And I'm going to save the more thorough memory analysis for another video but this quickie demo just shows that the memory capture did work and it did find some artifacts that were in fact in memory all right the second tool we are going to look at is called the linux memory extractor or lime and it's an open source tool that allows the capture of ram from a running linux device the bonus of this tool over AVML is that since Android devices are essentially running Linux, Lime also supports memory capture from them as well. And the way Lime works is that it is a loadable kernel module and not a executable unlike AVML. And so this means that it needs to be custom compiled for the specific kernel version that the target system is running. And so what you need to do is do some intel on the target system and make sure you know what kernel version it is running. And then you will need to find a test system that is running the same kernel version and that's where you have to compile the Lime module. So we have to go get the Lime source code from the GitHub repository. You can refer to the link in the description below or you can go to https colon slash slash github.com slash 504n6labs slash lime. Once we're there, we can click on the graphic that says latest, and you will see two different files that you can download. One is in the zip format, and the other one is the tar.gz format. I'm going to go ahead and click on the tar.gz file and then download to my system. I have the choice of opening the download with this in Grandpa Archive Manager, or I can save the file and then untar it myself. Since the computer is offering to do it for us, let's take up his offer. Select the one and only folder named lime-1.9.1, and then extract it to the downloads folder. At the pop-up panel, I'm gonna select close. So in order to build the module for Lime that works on your target system, we have to first determine what the target kernel is. So one way of doing that is to do cat uh, slash etsy slash os dash release. And here we see that it's uh, running Ubuntu, which is what Kane 12 is based on. And then we also run uname dash r. This will give us the kernel version. So for my example is 5.4.0. And then in the terminal, let's go ahead and change directory into the downloads folder. So cd 
downloads slash lime dash one dot nine dot one slash src do an ls we see all of the source files here in addition to the make file that helps us do the magic so let's go ahead and build the kernel module by typing the word make m-a-k-e and then once it's done, we can see the resulting module, which ends in the .ko extension. So let's do ls-l of lime star .ko. And so there is our compiled module file. And the name also contains the name of the kernel that was compiled for. And now let's do a file command on that same file. And we do see that is, in fact, the loadable module for this kernel. So now we have the loadable module. What we can do is we can copy this .ko file to a thumb drive and then plug that into the target machine. You need to load the line module into the target kernel, so that's what's going to extract its RAM. So make sure your USB thumb drive has enough space for the RAM dump which could be huge, right? Depending on the amount of RAM on the target system. It could be two gigs or it could be 32 gigs or whatever it is. So we've got the thumb drive plugged in. Let's go ahead and run the command that we need to run. So the command is sudo, right? Once again, because memory related tasks require root access. And then ins mod to insert the module. And then we're gonna to point to the module, which is in the thumb drive, so slash mnt slash hd slash lime dash 5.4.0 dash 90 dash generic dot ko. And then lastly, we have to tell it where to write out the memory extraction and then what format. So we're going to put in double quotes, path equals slash mnt slash hd slash target dot mem space format equals lime and double quote. And once we hit enter, this is going to start to insert that module into the kernel for the target system. And as it's doing that, it is actually dumping the memory. So it's going to take a while to come back. And once it's done, we can verify that the module was successfully loaded by doing the ls mod and then pipe that to grep of lime. And so we do see that module loaded. So that's a good sign. And then the other thing we can do is to verify that the module successfully ran by looking at the output specified by the ins mod command. So we can do ls lh of slash mnt slash hd slash target dot mem. And here, in fact, we do see the memory dump file and the size of this file is the same size as our target system's memory. And we can go ahead and clean up when we're done by unloading the module that we added to this target system. We do sudo rm mod for remove module of lime. And once it's done removing, we can verify that it's been removed by up arrowing to the ls mod command that pipes it to grep. And we do not see any modules anymore, so that module has been removed. And once again, let's do a quick demo to show that the memory capture has worked. And I'm going to use the strings command on the memory dump to search for that unique string again. So strings slash mnt slash hd target dot mem. And pipe that to grep dash i of Vanderlei. And once again, we see the strings and grep commands themselves because they're in memory, indicating that the executing commands are there. And then we also see parts of the document indicating that the unsaved document was in fact in memory and that this memory is a representation of what we downloaded. So we are good. So in this video, we saw the two primary methods for extracting memory from a live Linux system and it's lime and AVML. Lime is more cumbersome as you will need to know the kernel version of your target and then have another machine that matches that exact version so you can build the .ko module from. However, Lime is capable of dumping memory from an Android device, so that's handy. And then the second tool is AVML, which is super simple, as all you need to do is just bring the executable onto the staging drive where you're going to extract the data from, 
and then it seems to work very well on the different distros that I tried, which is Kane, it's a Ubuntu version. I tried it on Kali, which is Debian, and then I tried it on a Fedora build as well. So note that for either method, you will need root access to the target machine uh, th where you're trying to dump the memory from. For more videos on the Linux command line, make sure you watch these videos here. For videos about tools on the Kane distro, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.